Hey, hi, howdy, and hello, friends. Wiggity here, trying out something just a little different. Today, I've given myself a little challenge, and I'm going to complete the community center only using glitches, exploits, and game manipulations. Well, wiggity, you say, that's easy. Just buy a bunch of chickens with item codes in their names. Okay, yeah, I could do that as I play on PC, but that'd be way too easy. Being that I'm going to only use items for the community center found through more questionable means, I'm throwing down a ton of restrictions for myself too. This is a challenge after all. With that, I'm not allowing myself to do almost anything legitimately, unless there is some sort of caveat. Okay, so let's go over the glitches, exploits, and game manipulations that I'm going to be using. First up, we have the more commonly known name glitch with item codes. Now, I'm only using this on my own name and my pet for items that'll be useful, but not used in the community center. I'm also not allowing myself to sell these items either. Chair access allows us to access places we wouldn't be able to without upgrades, so that's on the list. Out of bounds, this glitch will be used to let me access different areas I wouldn't otherwise, like the quarry and the summit, train station before summer, and the mines during days one to four. Wallpapers. Okay, this has mostly been patched out for specific things like using certain wallpapers for a galaxy sword or a dinosaur egg, but there are actually quite a few wallpapers that act as items in the community center and they still work, so I'll be using them. Gift manipulation. There are quite a few items that you can get for the community center as a gift in the mail from quite a few people. I'll be focusing on these six. When they send me a gift in the mail and it's not something I need, I reset the day until it is. I'm also going to be gift manipulating the gift I get at the Feast of the Winter Star 2. The Tuesday Special. Okay, I classify this as a game manipulation because you can access Robin's shop when she's walking by on Tuesday even though she's closed. I decided to only be able to sell or buy from her when I normally wouldn't be able to. And to go with that, I'm going to use the rainy day method for Willy's shop too. So he doesn't work on Saturdays unless you use a rain totem the previous day or it's raining on a Saturday. With that, I decided I'm only able to sell fish on a rainy Saturday. I'm also going to be doing clay farming for money, strategic day resets as needed, using the first fish catch guarantee on a harder fish, use geode farming to help with the museum donations, collect resins without tapping any trees, and assure that I only harvest gold crops for my quality crop bundle. So what am I allowed to do and not do? Well, for one, I can't ship anything. I can only sell items directly to a shopkeeper, Robin on Tuesdays and Willie on rainy Saturdays. I can't buy anything from any of your standard shopkeepers apart from items that help me with my glitches. So chairs, the wallpaper catalog, wood chippers, and the telephone. And I'm allowing myself backpack upgrades because that's the one upgrade that I don't think I can live without. I can buy one sunflower seed from Jojo Mart on a Wednesday because it's cheaper than Pierre and he's closed that day. And I can buy Omni Geodes and Honey from Sandy. I'm mainly going to be making any purchases from the traveling merchant, but only items I need for the community center and nothing else. And same goes for the desert trader. Any seeds that I get from the museum are free to use as I can get them as an award from using items found from glitches and manips, and I'm allowing myself the free 15 parsnip seeds at the beginning too. So that means I can't buy any seeds, upgrade any tools, build any buildings, or buy any chickens from Marnie to name for more items. I can't craft anything if it's going to help me make money, so no machinery or whatever. And all resources I use for anything needs to be found in an area I access only by glitching or using a manipulation. And I won't be completing any bundles at all until everything is ready to go all at once. Now that we've gone over all that, this is a seeded run. I spent a bit of time looking at different seeded farms and found one that's going to give me all of the specific things I need from the traveling merchant in the first year, as long as I check the box with the red cabbage guaranteed option at the start of a new farm. All right, and with that, let's get this thing rolling. Hi, my name is what? My name is who? <laughs> My name is Desert Warp Totem Deluxe Fertilizer Golden Pumpkin. Okay, yeah, that's a name. So you can use the item code glitch on the farm name as a few people will mention it here and there, but I didn't think about that at this time. <laughs> I chose these three items as I can use the Warp Totem for easy early access to the desert and get me out of places when I get stuck. And the fertilizer will help me with getting gold crops and the pumpkin, the golden pumpkin is a universal love for gifting. 
Of course, gotta check this box. I know what days the merchant is going to sell me things that I need, but I still need to check twice a week until I find the red cabbage seeds as that isn't known in the seed and it's different per file. Now to give myself a head start, we have to watch the cutscene and have Robin and Lewis say my name when they show me the place. Right away on the first day, I get to clearing and planting parsnips with the little deluxe speed grow I have. All resources I gather from the farm get trashed. I met Caroline and Pierre as they say my name on our first greeting, poof over to the desert and chop some trees for a chest. Here, everything is free game. Back home, I head on up to the mines with a chair. By using the out of bounds glitch, I place a chair on the cliffside and head to the mines for the first time. Now anything I get from the mines from today to the day four, I am free to sell, use, whatever. Once the mines are officially open, I'm not allowed in here anymore. The mines are my current source of mixed seeds, which I'll need for certain crops over the next few seasons, so I always, always keep those. On day two, I pop on down to the ocean real quick before anything else to get my fishing rod, head towards the mines again, and collect anything from the side of the boulder. I focus on making a little progress, and I'm looking for a crab. I get to level 25 and hop the elevator a few times to take out Dougies in search of a yam. The third day of spring is a big day because it's raining and I'm ready to catch my first fish, but until it's time, I spend some time in the mines. I'm on the hunt for yams, mixed seeds, bugs, and geodes. I find a few good geode rocks on level 21 and I hop levels until it's about 3 p.m. Poof to the desert because that's the only way out of here right now. Collect some wood and head to the ocean. I decided that eel would be my first catch, as the catfish can be found in another way. Now, getting out of bounds at the ocean is a real pain. In order to get my cursor in just the right spot so that I don't end up turning around while I'm trying to do this glitch, I need to change to windowed mode. Now, the first fish you catch brings up the fishing tutorial, which won't lose progress on the sidebar. It works on any fish with a lower item code number, so I catch the eel as my guaranteed catch and head on back to the mines to level 20 to try my hand at catching the ghost fish, though I do pass out before it bites. The fourth day of spring is also the last day that I can spend in the mines as they officially open up tomorrow and I'm not allowing myself to go back in after that. It's a long day of geode farming for me. I catch the ghost fish, find a yam from a duggy, search for more mixed seeds, and casually find the living hat. Now, I was planning on resetting this day if I didn't find a certain number of geodes, but that's definitely not happening now. Oh boy. I also slay enough bugs to get the insect head later. At the end of my mines run for the last few days, I have a few artifacts, a decent amount of geodes, and 16 mixed seeds, which is more than enough. I got the crab, the ghost fish, yam, and red mushrooms needed too, and some goodies to sell. The fifth day is my first Friday, and I got my first golden parsnip too, which is fantastic. The traveling cart doesn't have anything I need just yet, but I still gotta keep an eye out for those red cabbage seeds. I took a chair to the secret woods and headed up to the mines to not get anything there done, except for grab some items to donate to Gunther to collect my cauliflower seeds and crack open some geodes. I was able to donate enough to get my melon seeds for next season. Now I've been giving out golden pumpkins, but I learned that Emily says my name when I give her something she hates, so some fiber for you to top me off. <laughs> Saturday is my day for visiting the tide pools. I can use the out of bounds glitch to pop on a chair on the dock to access here without fixing the little bridge. So that's now part of my Saturday routine until I find everything that I need for the crab pot bundle. While I'm here, I do some fishing, leave the extras in a chest for the rainy day and use a desert totem to get home because I have too much money in my pockets to pass out. Sunday the 7th, I had reset the day to know which parsnip was going to be gold and place cauliflower seeds in their place. I have some big purchases coming up soon, so I head to the desert to do some clay farming. This newer pattern is so much better than the old one, easier to keep track of, and I end up with a decent amount before I am out of energy. On Monday, I clear up some space on the farm to make navigation easier and toss out all the bits. Then Tuesday rolls around and I stare at the counter in the carpenter shop until Robin passes by to sell all of my clay and buy a phone and some extra chairs. 
Now I'm going to need specific forage over the next few seasons and only a certain amount will spawn on the screen at any given time. So I look at the forage spawn map on the wiki and start covering all potential forage spots in the areas that I personally can't harvest from. I don't know if it makes it more likely that they will show up over at the quarry when I need it, but I figured any little bit might help. I also make a ton of prank calls to guests to get enough pumpkins for gifts for the week, which is why we got this phone. With the rest of my club money, I got the first backpack upgrade too. I got a cat the next day. This cute kitty will be used for an item code glitch too for items that will be useful for me later. I'll name you Banana Void Mayo Island Warp Totem. Now a good way to only harvest gold quality crops that I'll be using often is to fill your inventory up completely with only a gold quality of the crop you are harvesting. That way you won't accidentally pick any other quality. We got one today and only one to go. Okay, so Friday, I got another gold parsnip. So I harvested all the rest to make space for the cauliflower seeds and went fishing for the carp and wood skip in the secret woods. I brought an emerald I had saved from my mining days to trade for some cheese at the desert trader and went to bed. Now it's the day of the egg festival and I went to the desert to clay farm again until it was the last minute. When I won, of course, Louis said my name while declaring me the winner, so I got some more goodies, and I tried to visit the tide pools after to gather a bunch of good things, but I just didn't have the time. That upcoming Tuesday, I did a bit more clay farming and made a good chunk of change selling to Robin, and on Wednesday, I started buying up Omni Geodes from Sandy. I want to be able to access the sewers, so I'll need to donate a lot of things. Oh man, that's expensive. I sold a bunch of things to Pierre with zero intention of spending money at his store, but to collect funds for Sunday because I have a lot of stuff coming up at the merchant that day. The tide pools gave me a mussel on Saturday, which was nice, and the desert had a palm fossil and a golden mask buried today. Sunday the 21st is here, I head straight to the merchant and buy a lot of expensive goodies, pomegranates, rabbit's foot, orange, and poppy seeds. Pricey, but so worth it. I was feeling great, so I decided to make it over to the quarry for the first time, with chairs placed here and here. I wanted to clear up these rocks to make room for gems and leave the maple trees for fall-time hazelnuts. That evening, I picked up my insect head from the Adventures Guild too, and started working on covering up the beach to try to force more spawns at the tide pools. That Tuesday was actually a rainy day, so Robin doesn't go to her aerobics class, so I don't have as much time to get my clay farming done. But we made quite a bit of money. Spring is almost over, just got to wrap up a few things this season. Got the sandfish while waiting for Sandy to open up on Wednesday. Bought the apple sapling from the merchant on Friday. Covered up more beach and got the maki roll in the mail from Linus on Saturday. Linus only gives a couple of items in the mail that I don't need for the community center, so I don't need to reset the day just yet. The tide pools had a clam for me that day. Sunday, the merchant had a large brown egg for me and I started planting the mahogany seeds I've been collecting from green slimes in the secret woods over at the quarry. I'll be popping into the quarry mine quite a bit looking for certain drops from the haunted skulls and got super lucky with a dark sword drop and some dandy pants too. The rest of the night was spent fishing at the lake in an unreachable space. First day of summer, I plant some mixed seeds and reset the day until I get some that I like. I need a pepper, corn, and 10 wheat from these, so I can't plant them all willy-nilly. I got three of the wheat planted and decided to save the seeds for the beginning of a new day to make it easier with resetting. I'll be doing that until I have 10. And then I plant with fertilizer all the melons, poppy, and star fruit from the museum. I have more than 15 seeds, so a scarecrow was crafted and placed because I'm not taking any chances. I prank call Clint about 10 times to stock up on fertilizer and gifts and it's fun to annoy him. On the second, I got another wheat planted and headed up to the train yard. This place opens up tomorrow so using the out of bounds glitch to get there today means that anything that I can get up here is free game for me. I place some paths on forage spawn spots to hopefully force spawns up on the path to the summit as I'll need to find a sweet pea here. Lucky for me, there was a spice berry here ready to grab too. Thursday is a good luck day, so I decided to try and fish for summer fish at the ocean and some treasure. I caught the puffer fish, tuna, and an anchor, leveled up to five in fishing too. I still haven't had a rainy Saturday, so I've just been hoarding all of my fish until I finally do. 
I got my fiddlehead ferns from the secret woods and fished for summer fish at the lake, finding some good treasure, but not the sturgeon just yet. On Sunday, I got my last wheat seed needed planted and there was an oyster at the tide pools and I caught a red snapper and found a golden relic at the desert, then did some clay farming for the next two days, selling to Robin on Tuesday. That gave me enough money to have Demetrius stop by and set up my cave, which <laughs> doesn't matter because I can't use it anyways. I went to the luau, dropped a gold star cauliflower in the pot and called it a day. Friday to Sunday, there was supposed to be more shells washing up on the shores, but nothing that I needed for the community center, sadly. Got the skeletal hand though. Oh, and I also picked up a honey from Sandy's place. The weather man said that it was going to rain tomorrow on a Saturday, finally, so I started getting ready. That morning, the melons were ready, so with a full inventory, I harvested only the gold star ones. Clint sent me an iron bar, and then I start selling all of my extra fish to Willie and go fishing and catch the sturgeon and an ancient doll. Sunday brought me my last gold star melon, so I sold a bunch of extra stuff to Pierre. Monday gave me my first high quality corn. The iridium works for our bundles too, and there was a grape over at the quarry, which was awesome. The haunted skulls gave a solar and void essence needed for the community center. Wednesday, Clint sent me another iron bar, so I did a quick reset to trade it out for gold. On Friday, Linus sent me some mail, so I reset the day to get the largemouth bass. I had already caught one, sure, but decided that the fish from Linus's gifts were going to be the ones that I donate. More prank calls to Pierre that day too. I bet he just loves me. Another gift from Linus on Sunday. This time I reset to get the catfish. The merchant had a duck feather ready and waiting and my first mahogany tree was ready to chop down. Monday, Clint sent me the copper bar that I needed after a few resets. And on Tuesday, there was a sweet pea up at the train yard, yay. I had enough time to catch a tilapia at the ocean and some fish down at the river. I got the Iridium Crobus too, and a treasure chest that I can't actually sell to anyone, so that's kind of a bummer. Wednesday, I picked up some geos from Sandy's and opened up a bunch at Clint's to donate for pumpkin seeds. And I remembered to grab my one sunflower seed from Jojo Mart because it's the only thing cheaper than at Pierre's, and Pierre's is close today too. Friday, the 26th, and Caroline sent me that cauliflower that I can use for the spring crop bundle. The traveling cart had a large goat milk, a green bean, and I picked up the cherry too. Saturday was another rainy day. Now I didn't have a whole lot of fish stocked up, but sold what I could. On the last day of summer, I just cleared up some space on the farm to make it easier to navigate tomorrow and dumped the resources. On the first day of fall, I only need one seed from these mixed seeds for the eggplant, so I reset until I got it, planted my freebie pumpkins with fertilizer, and got my final high quality corn and three apples on the third. Sunflowers were ready the next day, and my eggplant was ready on Saturday. Monday was blackberry season, so I got a few from the bushes in the secret woods, along with another common mushroom, and Thursday, Emily sent me a gift in the mail. The priority from her is wool, so I reset until I got it, as I had a backup plan for getting cloth. On Friday, there was a duck egg at the cart. Sunday the 14th, and my pumpkins were ready, so I filled my inventory and harvest only the gold star ones. On Monday, Dimitri sent me a nautilus shell after one day reset. Tuesday, I picked up all the other pumpkins, as I now had enough high quality ones. Wednesday was a good and rainy day, so it was a day for fall fishing, catching the shad, walleye, and tiger trout. All I have left for fish is a cockle for the crab pot bundle and a bream from Demetrius, but fishing is still helpful for artifacts and geodes on lucky days. On the 19th, Demetrius sent me another gift, so I reset to get that bream, and the cart had the large white egg I needed. I checked the tide pools, and the cockle was there! The last item that I needed for the fish tank bundles, which is super great. I got a new top from the Haunted Skulls, look and fly. Sunday, my chests are getting pretty full, so I sell off a bunch of extra bits over to Pierre. I have been shaking my maple trees at the quarry for hazelnuts every day since the 14th and finally found one on the 22nd. On the last day of fall, Emily sent me that cloth, so now I don't need to trade aquamarine at the Desert Trader for it anymore. But I was scrambling for a wild plum today. I wasn't able to find one in any area that I could use for my challenge, so that's going to have to wait until next fall, sadly. Getting really close with all of the items I need, only a few more things left. 
All right, winter, gotta love it. I do some light clay farming for winter roots and snow yams at the quarry and continue it on the beach over the next few days. I had made sure to clear the paths here last season. This is going to be our big money maker for getting the wallpaper catalog and the vault bundle taken care of. Sunday the 7th, Caroline sent me that potato and the traveling merchant sold me the red cabbage seeds, which I can use later. The 9th on a Tuesday, I snuck in a purchase at Robin's for some wood chippers to help me get maple syrup from chipping hardwood. And on the 17th, I farmed some winter forage while waiting for the night market to open up where I bought a tomato. Sunday the 21st held the last item I needed from the traveling cart, the truffle. Hooray! The feast of the winter star. I need wine for my gift received, so I reset the day and arrive at different times until I get it from Pierre. The 27th finally has a crocus for me at the summit path, and I get a bunch more winter forage from the beach. The last day of winter and of the first year, I sell off a bunch of stuff to Pierre to buy the wallpaper catalog and the last backpack upgrade. Crack open a ton of geodes to donate and get kinda sad that I didn't find a crystal fruit out in the wild. Next year, I guess. It's year two and it's time to get serious, I guess. <laughs> I started moving everything that I've collected for bundles over to boxes in the community center and keep fishing for more geodes. On the 18th, I have enough to crack open and donate to the museum. I'm just one artifact shy of getting the rusty key, which I catch in a treasure chest on the 21st. Monday the 22nd, Gunther finally gives me the rusty key so I head to the sewers with that void mayo I got from my cat's name and buy a void egg from Krobus. With my handy dandy chair, I hop over the magic barrier and collect the dark talisman, open up the doorway at the train yard and give the mayo to the goblin. I kind of forgot that I can fish this out from here during this quest, but whatever, it's fine. I snag that magic ink and meet the wizard for the first time, before even checking the tablet in the community center. I'm wanting a purple mushroom from old Razzy Raz, so now I have a chance. Thursday the 25th, I gather everything I might need for my fun new trip and poof on over to the island with that warp totem that I also got from my cat's name. With this banana and searching around using my walnut guide, I unlock the island farmhouse that night. Here, I plant some mixed seeds the next day for melon and blueberries, plus my red cabbage seed. I use the kitchen here to cook up that void egg for the fried egg dish and explore the volcano for some fun while I'm waiting for everything to grow. I got the prismatic shard up at the top of the volcano and I'm finally able to upgrade those red sneakers to something better. On the last day of spring, the hardwood chippers gave me that maple I needed, so that's done. Summer the 11th gave me all the other things that I needed, the blueberries, the melon, and red cabbage, so I went to the luau with a magnet cap to hopefully boost up the wizard a bit more and called it good. So now that we're back home, I bring that prismatic shard over to the desert for a shiny new sword. And that Monday, I trade some omni geodes for some hay with the trader. Now that we're nearing the end of everything, I'll be sleeping through a lot of time. On fall 6th, Razzy Raz sent me a purple mushroom and I finally got an oak resin from the Haunted Skulls. I got my wild plum from the quarry on the 20th, so it's sleep through winter until I find a crystal fruit and that's pretty much the last thing. I didn't have to hibernate too long. Saturday the 6th has what I was looking for at the quarry too. Oh wait, I forgot that I need some more money, so it's off to the beach to clay farm for winter forage to sell to Pierre and collect the 13 wallpaper items I need for the bundles and put them in their respective boxes. Finally, after all this time, everything I need has been gathered, so it's off to the community center to finally read the tablet on the ground, and now we wait for tomorrow. I got the letter from the wizard, so it's off to the tower to learn Junimo-ish and complete the community center all in one day on the ninth. To come on by and collect the hero trophy on the 10th of winter in year two. And that's how I did it. Would I ever try this again? <laughs>
absolutely not. Uh, but it was a fun challenge to um, challenge myself to play the game in a way it wasn't really meant to be played. So how about you? Is this something you'd ever try out? Oh, and what was your favorite glitch or manipulation that I used on this run? Honestly, the most frustrating one was probably getting to the tide pools. Um, let me know in the comments. Oh, and remember to subscribe to keep up with fun challenges like this. I do have a few more in the works. Well, friends, I'm Wickedy. Hey, thanks so much for hanging out in the valley with me, and I'll see you next time. Bye!